This is a 60 year old ma man who experienced a sudden onset of aphasia while shoveling his driveway. This was followed by a witnessed tonic-clonic seizure. So let me show you his CT scan first and then we will discuss the EEG and the risk of seizures associated with strokes. So you can see this is the right hemisphere of the brain, this is the left hemisphere. You can see the effacement of sulci, so the sulcus here are quite well demonstrated. You do not see the sulci on this hemisphere. And you can see this, you can appreciate the edema. Compare the right side with the left side and you can appreciate the swelling on the left side. And as we go to the inferior slices, you can see this nice stroke in the distribution of the left middle cerebral artery. In fact, it's a pretty big stroke. So you can see the extension of the stroke with edema and you can see the involvement of the basal ganglia which suggests that this uh, is a proximal middle cerebral artery stroke. The question for you is what is the risk of experiencing a seizure with any acute stroke? So if it is an ischemic stroke as it applies to this patient or a hemorrhagic stroke or a subarachnoid hemorrhage, what kind of a risk is there to experience a seizure with the stroke? And the second question is what kinds of stroke put a patient at a high risk? And we will discuss just that. This is the EEG of the same patient. So let's first look at the EEG and I will then discuss the risk of the seizure in patients with stroke. So this is the EEG on this patient. You can see a very clear slowing in the left hemisphere. So all the odd numbers are recording electrical activity from the left side. And you can appreciate polymorphic delta activity with some superimposed theta activity and there is fast frequencies all over the place. So let's look at some of that EEG. What appears as sharp waves here is actually an ECG artifact. So don't get misled when you see uh, sharp, sharply contoured waveforms and let me demonstrate that to you. So if I put a cursor between this sharp activity here and the QRS complex you can easily identify that this is ECG artifact and you can see more of that ECG artifact here and here and here. So the sharp activity that appears in the left hemisphere, specifically this sharp activity, is related to the QRS complexes on the ECG. So this is ECG artifact. And sometimes people missed, uh, are misleaded because there is also slowing in the same area. Now if you keep an eye on this person, let me show you something else. There are some low amplitude sharp waves on the left side. So this does not fall with the QRS complex. This, it is a low amplitude sharp activity and could account for epileptiform discharges from the same location. So let me show you another one. So although this is ECG artifact right here. This here, this is not ECG artifact. This is an actual discharge that is coming from the epileptic generator. One may argue whether this is some kind of an artifact from the P wave, which is a possibility, but we'll keep an eye for that. And when describing the CEG, keep in mind that this is persistent slowing. So whenever you note persistent, persistent slowing in, in, on an EEG, always consider the possibility of a structural abnormality. Persistent slowing can also be seen in a post-ictal state, so that is always a possibility as well. This patient did have a witnessed seizure, most likely coming from the left hemisphere and this was in the setting of the stroke, acute stroke I should say. So pretty much most of this sharp activity that you see here, most of this sharp activity, 
this is artifact from the ECG but some activity this is still the sharp activity from that but there is some activity that is not necessarily related to the artifact So often when a person has had an acute stroke, you start seeing higher amplitudes and more slow activity on that side. It depends whether the cortex is involved or not, whether it's just the white matter. Mostly with white matter lesions, patients tend to present with polymorphic theta or delta activity. If the cortex is involved later on after the stroke, a person starts losing the fast frequencies. So coming back to our questions, what is what percentage of patients who experience a stroke have a seizure in the first 24 hours or within the first few days? So there have been a number of studies done from different places. An approximation is 2 to 3 percent of patients with ischemic stroke will have a seizure within the 24 to 72 hours. And when we say seizure, we mean convulsive seizure because all patients are not being monitored by a continuous EEG so it's very hard to say whether there are non-convulsive seizures that these patients experience which will be equivalent to electrographic seizures. So 2 to 3 percent of patients with ischemic strokes will have a seizure in the first 24 to 72 hours and the risk is higher if it is a cardio, if you suspect this is a cardioembolic stroke, so more like a cortical wedge-shaped stroke, if somebody uh, in young individuals, so in children, if they experience an ischemic stroke, some studies uh, estimate approximately 20 to 22 percent will have a seizure in the first 24 to 48 hours. If this is a patient who has had an hemorrhagic stroke, approximately 3 to 8 percent will develop a seizure or will present with a seizure within the first 24 to 72 hours and if someone has had a subarachnoid hemorrhage as a cause of their stroke then almost 6 to 10 percent will have a seizure within the first 72 hours.